All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Bellied Up Podcast. I'm here with Charlie Barons, the Hi, man, guys. the myth, the legend. I am excited to be here today. Good time, Charlie with a Harley. Good time, Charlie with a Harley. He Facts. finally just listened to that song for the first time. He had no idea what we were talking about last time. I think I had heard it now that you played it. And now I have heard it either way. But now you have your anthem. You good. are good time, Charlie, with a Harley. There's one in every bar. Now, and Charlie, I got a I, me. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Uh, I got a question for you. Yes. Yeah, so Miles. you casually just threw around. Yeah. That you you shampooed your hair last oh, night, which was yeah. a big event. And I thought, well, I shampoo my hair every single day. Yeah, you're doing it talk, wrong. Talk me through it. Um. And I'll let you know why, because I've heard that before. Yeah, do you want the science? I, guess I just didn't know why you switched to that. Well, so it all started, I'll be honest with you. It started, I ran out of shampoo. <laughs> and uh, a week went by, I was like, well, I can't really tell. You know, you got to get through the awkward phase. The awkward phase, your hair going to look greasy when you stop shampooing every day at first. Get through that. How do you get through that? Because you just live your life and just say, ah, I just just showered, you know, because oh, it's yeah. all a little, getting a little greasy, a little wet. So you say, I How just long showered. is that phase? It's about a, it's a, not long. It's only a few days. It's about okay. a week. Give or take a week. Okay. A week, give or take a week. So some folks could be one. Some folks could be two. But, you know, uh, let's be honest. A lot of times you're wearing a hat anyway. Just get through the awkwardness with a hat. You know, and uh, if you work a job that doesn't allow you to wear a hat, get a new job. Um, it's worth it in the long run. Think about all the money I saved not using shampoo. But so you just for a couple of weeks, you just don't wash your hair and then it just doesn't matter or what? Yeah, it, it, you can't really tell. Like, have you ever been? A, have you ever said, Charlie, you're a greasy bastard? Yeah. Well, I mean, have you? Is that like the first thought that comes no, to mind? No. Yeah. See, like you guys. Yeah, but it, I know. would say so. Like, I just have naturally really oily skin, and you I just, think that. No, I. It's a fact. I haven't seen a pimple on your face. I know because I take care of my body. Oh, do you? Yeah. What do you wash your beard with? Um, shampoo. You shampoo your beard? Yeah, I just slap a little on there. There you, you know, go. Just all the way rotate it around. Look, I'm not here to uh, hairspray. No, I just, I just, um, I guess I don't think I could do it because my stage of when I just don't think my body is ever going to not produce a lot of oil. Yeah, I, a lot the, of grease. The key words in that sense are I don't think. And uh, in this world, Miles, we're allowed to experiment. We're allowed to see things, you know, especially you. So I is mean, the only advantage is that you don't have to buy as much shampoo because you're going to shower every day still. So what's the point? Uh, I don't know about that part. You know. Um, oh, you don't. You don't shower every day. Not every day. No. Are you kidding me? Uh, some days I wake up like if I'm just chilling, Charlie. Just me and yeah, Charlie. Yeah. I mean, if you're just at your house yeah. on a Sunday watching football, right? I'm not. Yeah. You think I'm showering for that? No, no, no. no. But, um, but but on like a normal day. Yeah. You just shower. You get your hair wet. You dry it, and actually the the grease helps style it a little bit. That's mm. why I'm wearing a hat right now because my it was too poofy. My hair was too poofy. I looked like um, I looked like uh, 1990s uh, Zach from um, uh, oh, uh, Saved by the yeah. Bell. Yeah, you did. I did. So I had to put a hat on because that's not really the style I'm going for. Uh, and that's why I don't shampoo. That's why I don't mess with that. So stuff. are you would you consider yourself a anti shampoo activist? I just consider myself a rebel, Miles. <laughs> OK, um, a rebel without a cause. Uh, I got a cause, and that cause it's is in the shampoo bottle. It's because ah, your hair is oily. Ah, ah, ah. It's not oily. Well, it's certainly not oily now. I just shampooed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you have it here. Well, apparently, we are a pro-anti-shampoo podcast. Do you um, shampoo uh, the hair down there? <laughs> no. No? No, I just use regular soap. Regular soap yeah. down there. Why aren't you shampooing that? Seems absurd. Thought you were oily. It's very funny for you to assume that I do have hair. That was my next question. <laughs> what are we what are we working with down there? Huh? I don't think I want to talk about this on a public podcast, oh, Charlie. Okay. So we oh, can now, talk about your greasy head. Now but Miles. We don't has need to be standards. talking about my greasy balls. Okay. You know? 
So I didn't say they were greasy. You were insinuating. I just didn't know if you weren't shampooing and you're a greasy fella. I'm saying one plus one equals greasy balls. One plus one equals two greasy balls. That would have been a funnier way to say that joke. Well, anyways, should we uh, take some it's callers? It's enough about Charlie's scalp. I think we should maybe dive into it. Let's do it. Let's talk to some folks. Hello. Who do we got on the line? Hey, this is Dylan. How you guys doing? We're do- doing good, Dylan. I got Charlie here, too. That's unfortunate, but we'll deal with that. Oh, I, I could tell. He must be from Chicago then. He also <laughs> gave it a pause, too, you know, <laughs> trying to remember who that was. Dylan, what the heck's going on? What's up? Hey, belly on up to the bar. Oh, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Because I've got you coming through the truck so I can take it off if you can't hear me all right. No, no you we sound can good. Hear you good, Dylan. <laughs> all right, good deal. No, I'm headed on home. Uh, I just had to visit my father in law because. I hired him uh, to work for me, so that's always a great experience. I'm sorry about that. No, I'm just yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's an interesting <laughs> choice right there. Well, I yeah. hope you know that you've now hired him for life. Yeah, because good luck letting him go. Yeah, you know, once 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 you have him, there's no real getting rid of him. Like I had him at home, now I've got him at work too. Got to find a good balance. There's not one. Wait, you had him at home first? But, he was living with you guys? So, yeah, they, they know that we, there was a point in time where me and my wife were living with him and his wife. Luckily, before the hiring process started, I had already moved out of his house. Okay. So, what do you do but for a living then? there was a point in time where we were... So, I'm, I'm not going to just, you know, say what company it's for, but it's for a large company. I'm a manager of, a, of the general maintenance side of that area. And so he's a technician that works under me. He's so, one of 15 that I have. So you guys are in the mob. That's yeah. pretty clear. Waste yeah. management. Yeah. Waste I mean, management. Yeah. We clean up messes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, we, we clean. You say what you want to say, right? Well, well what industry are but, you in? Can you give us an insight on what actual industry it is? Yeah, uh, we're in, like, the, um, the grocery industry. Okay. Oh, grocer. Yeah. We no. take care of things inside of stores, so like the floor equipment, the uh, the power lifting equipment, forklift, uh, cooking equipment. By the way, I am forklift certified. Are you actually, or are you certified with quotes? Well, I mean, yeah, technically, yeah. I have the card. It says I'm forklift certified. Did you print that card off at your home computer? <laughs> <laughs> That's not to be disclosed. I mean, they did say, hey, go get on that forklift. And I was like, well, what about the test? Like, this is the test. Get on there. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Okay. So how is it going so far having the father-in-law working for you? In the beginning, everything was fine. Here in the end, I say it's not in the end. We're still in the middle of it. (laughs) I'm not wanting to get rid of it. But how do you you positively encourage someone that, that you're related to? Well, what are you having issues with? Is it is it effort? Is it is quality of work? What what are you having issues with? <laughs> Let's say not listening. I'm telling someone like, hey, you need to order these parts, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I mean to do that, and it's like, well, I told you two weeks ago, and here we are having the same conversation again. Uh, when are you gonna do it? Yeah, are I you- think I think first lesson. I'll hop in, then you can go, Charlie. Think first lesson is is don't ever hire your father in law. I think that that's yeah. probably number one. Well, we're past that. Okay. <laughs> the mistake's been made. Okay, the, da- the damage no is done. Back. But you do acknowledge your next father in law. You're not going to hire, correct? <laughs> well, I'm hoping not to pull a Charlie on that one. Oh, <laughs> oh, let's go! Wow. See, I didn't even bring up your Damn. divorce this time. Burned. You just brought it up again. Oh, Miles. sorry, sorry. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I did. It. I did it first. I'll take. I'll take the blame for that one. But Charlie, you brought it on yourself. All right. Thank you, Dylan. I wonder what I did to you. <laughs> God dang. You know what? I think I'm Charlie's you starting to. The phone. I think. Char- I think Charlie's starting to feel a little bit like your father-in-law. Is this how you talk to him too? Yeah. Don't take your father-in-law <laughs> trauma out on me. <laughs> Look, you just have another tippy towel and you sit there and let the men talk. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, okay. You know what? I am gonna let the men talk. I want to see what the men come up no, with. I want, no, I want to see the solution you two dipshits come up with here. <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what you guys pull out of the magic. You know hat. what? Actually, it probably wouldn't be terrible to get Charlie's experience because he's been through a divorce, but he might know better. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, first of all, <laughs> man, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> like, how did you how did you see this ending? Best case scenario, it's just well, not that also, bad. So let's give him credit for the reason that I'm in the industry that I'm in. Is when I started dating his daughter, the company that we worked at before, he trained me and taught me everything. So time out. And so when I got into this company in Casper. So he <laughs> used to be your boss? And now you're his boss. No. Well, so so when we first got hired on together, he was just another tech like me and he trained me. Then he got promoted with that company and was my boss. Then he stepped down and then we were equals again. Then I left, got promoted, and then I hired him and now I'm his boss. <laughs> was there any... Uh, did the yeah, people... I, it's, a, it's a circle. It's a circle. Did the company know that you were interviewing your father-in-law? So my boss's boss knew, and I was like, is it going to be okay? And he's like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and so here he is on a live podcast. Live on a podcast, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, that's why I didn't dispose the company. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Is your name even really Dylan? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So we can only do so much math. But I don't go by my, well, yeah, no, no, you're fine. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'll never get in trouble anyway. Okay, that's the that's the famous last words, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like when you're a kid and you're sneaking snacks in your bedroom. My parents will never know. Yeah, and then they come I'll in just and put I'm, all these wrappers under my pillow. I'm balls deep in a <laughs> thing of popcorn, and I get in trouble. You know, that's what he's about to embark hey, on. I think. Just, yeah. Um. Okay. So to first place, I would go to try and get my father-in-law to get in line, right? is I would talk to your mother-in-law because she's had years and years and years of experience of, hey, how do you get them to do what you want them to do? Because wives know how to work their husbands. I know that. My initial reaction? I don't think I I have the same thing to offer. (laughs) Yeah. Well, 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 my initial reaction is, Miles, that's a stupid thing to do, (laughs) but it might just be so dumb it works. What's your relationship with your mother in law, right? right, Like, oh, it's it's great. We all have a great relationship. Oh, you do have a great. Well, why don't you just hire her then? (laughs) (laughs) I hired her before I hired you, Charlie. So, thank you, Dylan. Now, you're telling me, Dylan, I don't know what I did to you, (laughs) but I've just been such a polite fella on this podcast, and you're razzing me. Yeah. Hey, let's start it. You are very nice. Thank you. So, okay, Dylan, what's your bone to pick with Charlie? Yeah, what? Is, I'm not your father-in-law. I didn't uh, hire well, your I'll father-in-law. With, I'll start with he's got he's got the worst merch. You know, I've only bought merch from you. Well, uh, all okay. the shirts are quality. Hey, Dylan, <laughs> guess what? You don't know I have the worst merch until you buy a shirt. <laughs> is it overpriced? Yeah, I can just tell by the design. Well, you know what? The designs actually, I got some good ones. Also, they're made Go in to the manuagluna.com. Made in the USA. <laughs> Mine's printed in the USA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right here in the Midwest. Dylan, let's get back on track here. You do you have any other superior to your father in law that could step in and manage him directly? But so then you he'd could, have to reveal that it's his father in law. He's in a total. Well, he can just say, hey, there's this exactly. fella. Can't uh, I mean? Does he have to report to you directly? Is there any way you can get a third party involved? Technically, we're not supposed to do that. And don't think like again. It's not like he's a big bothersome. It's just like, hey, I've asked you to do something, and we're sort of dragging our feet. No. Oh. Can your daughter? Or can, not your daughter. Can his daughter step in? Your wife? She probably could, but she probably choose not to. You don't you know, want to do that. Not to get involved with uh, any of my work. Yeah. yeah, Charlie, you know, that's why I'm not trying to be divorced. <laughs> and so the reason why I brought up the mother-in-law is you don't have to tell the mother-in-law you're having issues with them, but you could like just pick something really small. You're like, oh, he does this at work. Does he do that at home? And you guys can kind of bond and laugh over it. And then he can be like, so what do you do when he does that? <laughs> and then she'll give you a nice tip. And then you can apply that at work is how I would maybe do it. That looks good on the playbook. Let's see it on the field. Right. Yeah, she holds out on sleeping with him at night. Let me tell you, I'm not doing the same thing there. <laughs> I love how this guy thinks that the only way the world works yeah. is through sex. I love it. Really? Probably, probably. really that's, how, that's how a woman gets what they want. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. That's one it's way. It's been to... like that for years. So, 
All right. Well, that's my. That was my. I gave all advice I could give Charlie. What do you got? Oh, uh, you're the one throwing stones at my ideas here, Charlie. Let's hear your brilliant idea on okay. how to handle this, Charlie. Well, my brilliant idea, you poo pooed. I said talk to the daughter, but you know that, that's not going to happen. Uh, how long has he been on the job again? How many months? Or, or three months in. Does he need the money? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, you cannot fire somebody from this company unless they just turn and walk away. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Maybe you encourage it him. It is the hardest process. What's your father-in-law's name? Um, oh, you can't say that. Yeah, I don't you think can't he say, that. To say that. What hobbies oh, does he oh, have? Oh, oh, that's a, I mean, he watches wrestling. <laughs> he watches uh, wrestling. Any, anything? I'm trying to. Th- what, oh, yeah. You could encourage him to turn one of his hobbies into a job. And help him like yes, lay the groundwork, see. side hustle, lay the yeah. lay the groundwork to have him start right. focusing on his side hustle, and then uh, hopefully his side hustle takes off and he can get out of your hair. Maybe he'll start wrestling on the side, get injured, <laughs> and lay out of work for so long he'll lose his job. Okay, yeah, so you, go. Phys- you gotta. Okay, here we go. Maybe challenge him to a wrestling We're all match. <laughs> Challenge him to a wrestling match at the next family function, hurt his back, and then he won't be able to work, and then and then your problem solved. Sounds illegal. Sounds well, uh, premeditated. Uh, sounds illegal. Well, it's not premeditated. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, when you say it's premeditated, <laughs> it's it's more so not a premeditation. We, you know what? we never had that conversation. No, we, we didn't. Had we yeah. didn't. Yeah. It's just bleep out yeah. everything I, I just said. That's good. Just yeah. a long bleep. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll do that. We'll bleep it on this end. You'll be good to go. So get that beep yep. ready to rock and roll. And then, uh, yeah, he'll have to he'll have to quit. And how then, how old is he? 50, 55. Oh, you got like you got at least another decade before he's going to want to retire, too. Right. What the hell were you thinking, Dylan? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I think well, you're going to have to leave the company. I this line to be judged by you. You <laughs> judge me immediately, Dylan. This is a two way street, friend. <laughs> I am rubber and you are. Look, I'm listening super to enough cool. podcast. To, to judge you, right? I, I'm not buying any merch. If if they gave me your merch for free, I would turn it down. Send me your address. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> that would be funny if I got returned I'll to send. That would be hilarious. Finish. Dylan, I've got, I've yeah, got, me, I'm sending it back. I've got some great. You, so know, you know what's really funny, Charlie? What is yesterday? You posted on your story of that to have callers call in. Yeah, and then today I posted on my story. And so now we got your fans. Yeah, <laughs> they're just coming at you. Yeah. Your your friends are. My, are your- I mean, to be completely honest, the only reason I knew about this is because I watched Charlie first. Okay. Oh, and I was like, man, I like Miles better. Oh, <laughs> damn! I am just getting. Just getting roasted. This whole freaking um, uh, uh, Dylan. What the? Where are you driving? Is there uh, is there a cliff nearby? You want to just <laughs> hey light pole? You can down, that down here in Georgia. There's no cliff. There's no cliffs. Is there a, a body of water you can see if that thing will drive through? You know <laughs> anything? It's a Ford. It may break down before we get there. No, oh, what a shame that would be. Well, put it in the drink. See what yeah, happens, okay? Look. I bet you that Ford can get out of there. Yeah. I think the, I'm going to oh, leave you with man. this, Dylan. I think the, the final answer is you're going to have to leave the company and go find another job. Yep. That's it. That's the move. Mm. You you backed yourself I'll, into I'll a corner you guys. here. Yeah. Well, well you, you got a lot of miles. Why well, don't no. you go work in hey, miles? He's got merch. a lot of complaints about your merchandise, Charlie. He should get into your program and turn the ship around. Yeah, why don't you come here and uh, start slapping labels on or something? Or come up with some new designs. Send me a design you, know you would like. By the way, I'm wearing a great uh, supper club shirt right here. Made in the USA. You can buy it at mandowalkman.com. Got a tour coming up, charliebarons.com. Uh, anyway, as long as I'm getting roasted, I'm throwing out some plugs. Yeah, you might as well. You might as well. Yeah. Dylan, you coming to Vegas? I'm doing a show in Vegas. <laughs> If you were to come down to Georgia, I would love to go to your show. And I promise you, I would not heckle you. I think you're great. I've got to give you a hard time because I feel like 
everybody comes on and gives Miles a hard time. Oh, Thank you. I Thank see what's you. going on here. Uh, just so you know, Charlie, this is my cousin. I told him uh, to call in and, <laughs> and, and pump me up. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. getting paid by the minute yeah. right now. Yeah, he You is. know what? Hey, I, So we got to wrap this up. We're, all right. we're running into our budget here. <laughs> Well, Dylan, you come on the podcast. You belly up and gas miles up anytime. All right. <laughs> Pump his tires, fella. It's good talking yeah, absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good talking to you and good luck with your father in law. Thank you, guys. You have a great day. All right. Yeah, watch for deer. Bye bye. Finally. What was that? What was finally. that? I was just. Finally, just someone fired. calls in and gives Charlie crap. You it know feels what? good. I couldn't be on a higher high right now. You think what? You think I don't get enough crap? Is no, that what you think? No. Well, you get a lot of crap. You get all the ladies calling in and flirting with you over the phone, and well, uh, and I get just, nothing. They well, you're a married man. I know, but I'm just saying. Um, be nice if someone called in and gave you a little crap well, once in a while. Well, someone clearly did, and I you know. clearly paid him. Yeah. Your, your cousin down in Georgia. I'm gonna have to tip him a little extra because he did good. He he really did. <laughs> I mean, that guy was brutal. I'm gonna be honest. The merch thing was a little under the belt. I didn't oh, tell no, him to say he that. He never even bought one. No, and no. I have I've got some cool designs. You do. I like. Like them. Okay. Thank you. You looked away when you said that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where the stuff is that you gave me at currently. Ah, uh, well, I know where yours is. <laughs> where? It's definitely not at Goodwill. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no, I've got a nice you betcha vest. Yeah. You still sell them? Yeah, we got a few on the site. Well, Charlie, as well, you recover, Miles? have a little more tippy cow. Yeah, I, I've been drinking that a and, lot uh, reactively. And uh, we'll take another caller. Charlie, you know, it's one of my favorite things in the entire world. What's that, Miles? To uh, just get done with a round of 18, probably shoot uh, 69, par 72, 300 par is what I usually do. You know me. Um, I don't, then, are you being serious right now? Yeah, I'm being serious. You're that good at golf? Oh, God, yeah. Is Consistently golf, shooting guys? under par. No, they say you're not that good at golf. They don't know anything. I would never invite them onto the course with me. So how would they know? Regardless, when you get done going to the golf course, I like to hit up the 19th hole and yeah. pour myself a little bit of tippy cow. Tippy cow. Nothing tastes better after. Charlie, that. you love going golfing, right? I do love going golfing. Um, Is that your favorite part of the end of the round after you shoot under par? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like golfing that much. <laughs> <laughs> You're more uh, of a frisbee golf type of guy. Yeah. After yeah. a long hard day, eighteen holes on the frisbee golf course, Charlie the likes frolf to head course. to the nineteenth tree and <laughs> lean up against it and eat an apple and uh -huh. pour a glass pour of tippy cow. Tippy cow. Sometimes I howl out the apple and pour the tippy cow right Ooh, there. Yeah, that'd be good. Vanilla and apple. Yeah, you just you just howl it out. You know, pull out the cork and then uh, put some ice in there, and then you got yourself a Apple and orange cream sensation. Well, regardless of what uh, course you're playing, whether that's the Frisbee golf or the golf links, you got to end the day with a nice tippy cow. It's nothing goes down easier. Tip it on back. Tip with it on back cow. to the tippy cow. We love it. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to today? Hi. Uh, hold on. Give me one second. My boss is talking to me. Okay. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm surprised. What's You're surprised? Up? I'm sorry. Who are we talking uh, to? Sorry, my name's Ethan. My name's Ethan. How are you guys doing? We're doing good, Ethan. Wait, is this the same Ethan that we've talked to in the past? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, <laughs> he's back. Ethan, give us an... Ethan, Ethan, I'll Ethan. I think we should do a quick recap of the last call, and then I'd love to get an update. Miles, you want to do the No, let's recap? have Ethan do it. All Ethan, right. tell the folks what we talked about last time. Oh, geez, Louise, what happened last time? Well, last time, you know, I think you guys are doing much better. You guys go ahead and give it a shot. I want to hear you guys talk. You guys have a beautiful voice. Last time, I think you were talking to us about some uh, red flags turned green by your uh, goth girlfriend. Is is that about accurate? That's about accurate. I'd say something like that. Yeah. And she was uh, you're thinking of moving in with you and your dad. Yeah. So about that, <laughs> you know, about like. A week or two weeks after that video was posted, she uh, she went ahead and moved in with me. So that was a bit awkward. 
Okay. Well, did the video help or hurt your cause? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah in, in all seriousness, I saw that video and about like 30 different people kept on uh, adding me and sending me the video saying, hey, is this you? Is this you? And I never expected that video to be blown up as the way it did. It really did blow up. I mean, who would have thought just you not knowing the specifics of how long you were dating somebody? Um, I think that yeah, might so have how been long, the hook. Yeah, how long have you guys been dating now? Uh, I say a good six, seven, eight, nine months now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. I think that's a good ballpark. Yeah. I think that's a good ballpark right there, honestly. Okay, well, why don't you give us an update? You now are moved in. It's you, your wonderful goth girlfriend, and your dad. How is it going so far? Well, so far, so good. Uh, she was planning to move in at the end of last month, but a lot of things happened between her and her family, and there's a lot of bad juju going on. So she moved in uh, while she was down for a couple of days visiting me on a weekend. Uh, so it was a very abrupt and very sudden thing, and I'm still trying to get used to it, but it's a lot. It's a lot. I didn't think it'd be like this. Is this how it's like being married? <laughs> Yes, sir. That's why Charlie's no longer married. Well, you know, maybe I was a lot. Here's the question. What is a lot about it? What what's what's the big uh the big issue, the biggest conundrum you've run into yet? Oh, just space. Really? There's like I she has a lot of stuff. She has a lot of stuff. And she's moved in like in the middle of last uh month. And we're still moving all of her stuff in. I'm trying to find places for it. I just ain't got no space for it. What? I mean, what's what is so it? Clothes? Like stuff. Is it clothes? Is it clothes? Ma- clothes? Her figurines. She's got a lot of like uh, anime figurines. Again, she's more Asian than I am. It's it's really a wonder. It's it's like shell shock, really. Uh, but it's it, she has like a lot of stuff a lot of figurines a lot of clothing a lot of artwork more than me you know i have like one photo and i hang on the wall and i go beautiful makes my whole blank wall look like it'll look amazing while she's butchering me about it saying oh it's bent at a 45 degree angle it doesn't blend in with the wall and everything <laughs> i'm a man it only takes one thing for me to be so happy be so satisfied <laughs> That's a lot of pressure you got going right now. What is, what is the picture that you have hanging on the wall? Oh, it's uh. so when I was in Las Vegas, I uh, was seeing my sister's concert one time. I was walking around the strip and I saw a guy doing like spray paint art. I thought, <laughs> oh, that looks really nice. Oh, yeah, that looks really nice. It's like a like a Bob Ross uh, painting of like snowy mountains, pine trees, a river flow and all that shit bang. And was it spray paint or was it actual paint? Uh, one of the two. I okay. think it's actual spray paint. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I imagine that looked great. And so now what did she do? Is she hang a bunch of her own stuff on the wall or what? Not yet. I mean, she doesn't want to go through everything because it's all mine. And I work like 10, 12 hour shifts. So I just don't have the time. I come home and I'm like, Where's the fucking, uh, sorry, pardon my French. Where's the food? She's out cold. She's asleep. She She's awake at the night. I'm awake during the morning. It's cold, switch polar opposite type of deal. It's just, it, it's a lot. She hasn't hung up any of her stuff. Well, I only mean, hung up a little bit of her stuff, but not a lot. We're like going through the whole moving phase still. Well, what, how tough is it to just throw a nail in the wall and hang some of her stuff? I mean, yeah. are you that dog tired that you can't put a few nails in the wall? Yeah. Especially if she's cooking you dinner. Yeah, you know? a bit. Uh, that's fair, you know. Well, actually, in fact, I'm cooking her dinner. But she, she brings it up. She goes, oh, I'll cook some dinner. No, you won't. You're going to sit down. I'll cook you some dinner. That away. Okay. What are you I making said, her? Okay, fine. All right, fine. Well, ramen noodles, that's it. Ramen <laughs> so noodles. I know how to cook. There you oh, go. That's so <laughs> tough, yeah. Hey, uh, when you said you were in Vegas uh, for your sister's show. Is your sister performing? Yeah. So she's an artist. She uh, she sings a lot. Okay. Uh, this was like way back when, though. Oh, uh, God. Know, back in maybe 18 or 1920, somewhere around there. Uh-huh. Uh, 2018, 2019, 20. Yeah. Uh, her name's Carlia. She does a lot of singing. She's pretty cool and all. Nice. Okay. Nice. Well, okay. So your girlfriend's got a lot of stuff. What does your dad think of this situation? Oh, man. 
I don't know. I haven't asked him. He comes <laughs> around. I'm, I'm making ramen. I'm just minding my own business. I'm waiting for these eggs to boil, boil and he comes in just hey how's it going and i jump out of my pants i'm easily frightened and we start talking he goes so you guys gonna eat anything else but ramen i go that's all the woman wants man (laughs) i said that's easy that's good enough for me man that's good enough for me have you guys gone out on any like uh fun events the three of you you guys gone on any uh dates where your dad's the third wheel no, uh, uh, thankfully, no. Thankfully for the Lord, no. Do you know how awkward that would be? Oh, my goodness. We would not even talk. I, so a coworker of mine said, hey, you want to come out to Dave and Buster's with me and my wife? You can bring your lady along, too. I go, sure, let me ask her. And me knowing full well deep and down that she's going to say no, I walk around the corner. I wait for about five seconds. Come back around. She go, I go, yeah, no, I don't think so. She, she's got a whole lot planned on the table. Like what? I got to think of something. Uh, uh, laundry. Laundry. She, she's got a little laundry to do. She can't come in on that weekend. How about the next weekend? Yeah, the weather's not looking that good either. I'll have to pass on that. You know? It's like a whole ordeal. Yeah, so why? I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't know a ton of people that would turn down a Dave and Buster's invite. Why doesn't she want to go to D&B? Oh, dude, trust me. I would love to go in D&B. You know, they got that guitar hero. I love to play Boston on there and look like an absolute spoon missing every other note. But she just doesn't like to socialize. She'd rather stay inside and pet my fat cat and uh, just sit down and play games. That's it. And I respect it. I mean, that's less money for me, you know. But guitar hero? Hey, man, I'll take I'll take that any day. Okay, since she's moved in, what's been the best moment? And what's been the worst moment? Uh, Okay. Best moment, I think, is when she's taking a shower, I bust in, I pull my trousers down, and I start taking a big old whiz right in front of her, and she starts laughing and yelling me to get out. And I tell her, all right, hold on, give me a second. And then I pop a squat and then stink up the entire room and then leave afterwards. Uh, the worst moment is she takes up the whole goddamn bed. And I, I, I sleep in a king-size bed, and she likes to eat chips in there all, once in a while. I go, all right, yeah, go ahead. You know, we have a TV propped up at the foot of the bed. I go, yeah, go ahead, do your shebang, do your thing, whatever. I go to sleep, and uh, me personally, I like to sleep like a free man. I sleep buttle naked, and I get some crumbs in every crumb and every crack in my own body. I'm like, oh, ew, ah, what is this? It really affects my sleep. And she takes up the entire bed, which is impossible to do on a king size. But, I mean, you do it anyway. <laughs> No follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> so that really affects your sleep, huh? Just crumbs everywhere? Yeah, sometimes I'll lay down. Three seconds later, I feel like a cactus is stinging me. So I get up and I go, God dang, crumbs all over the bed. I'm smacking. I'm hitting it. She wishes it was her. I'm macking and hitting the bag and them all over the floor. I go, listen, next time, take it down to the dinner table. But there is no next time. It's always the dinner table. It's always the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so she's on a heavy diet of ramen noodles and chips is what it sounds like and she's still skinnier than a twig man it's unbelievable i wish i had that body i'll tell you what <laughs> so the best moment um let's just revisit yeah, that again yeah, yeah there's a lot you're, to unpack you're, you're here. peeing in the shower and then you're squatting down what what are you doing in the shower i'm, I'm taking a shit in the toilet and filling up the whole bathroom with my oh uh, <laughs> got it okay so now it sounds like though yeah i'm throwing this a stink bomb in there while she's in so, the shower so this is an unbelievable move all right so it sounds to me she's in the shower you go and you start peeing standing up and then at some point you decide to go number two and you reverse it and sit down on the toilet. Is that accurate? Well, you see, sometimes I like to switch it up and I like to pee standing, uh, sitting down and then poop standing up. But if I'm really feeling normal, then I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, pee standing up and sit down and then poop. <laughs> it really depends on the type of day. So she gets pretty mad. I mean, what is she end her shower sooner? So I she mean, get out I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say mad. Oh, well, maybe a little bit mad. I mean, she, Brandon, I mean, you, you take, I don't know, for example, let's say, I don't know, your sister, or, uh, your brother or whatever walks in. Well, I guess man to man is different, but your sister walks in and she takes a big old honking hoagie down to the toilet, thinking the entire place up, you know, it's, 
while you're taking a hot, steamy shower. You know, it's not very nice because then you got to immediately hop out if you have finished. You know, there's a whole process to it. Well, that was going to be my question. Has she done the same to you? Does she retaliate with it? No, 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 no. That's the thing. She won't even fart in front of me. I'm like, when are you going to, when are you going to pop a little suit in front of me? She goes, (laughs) why do you care so much? And I go, that means you're comfortable around me. You know, she goes, I will never do that. This is disgusting. I don't think I'm ever going to do that. While I'm in front of her, I'm ripping it like it's a Beyblade, you know? <laughs> Did you say ripping it like a Beyblade? Is that what it was? Like the yeah. little toy that you <laughs> Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Have you guys gone on any dates uh, since she's gotten there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually just uh, recently got back from the city. I took her up there because a brand new, uh, uh, like, a Japanese ramen joint opened up. And I guess so she's way more Asian than I am, too. She's, she's way more Asian than I am. They go in, and she sees all these figurines from all her different sh- shows. She goes, oh, this name, oh, this name, that name. I go, that's crazy. They all look the same. And then she calls me racist for that, but I don't understand. <laughs> Oh, fun story, fun story, true story. Went to a Chinese market with my mom. She, she's full-blooded Chinese. And I lost her one time. And I kept on walking around in the entire place. And I can only see the back of the head of them. And I kept on thinking every single one of them was my mom, but it wasn't. I kept on going up to them and saying, Mom, Mom, Mom. They turn around and I see them. I go, oh, sorry, my bad. Oh, oh my bad. Oh, sorry. So now we came up with like a whistling thing. You know, I'd whistle, she whistles back. It's kind of like an echolocation type of deal. <laughs> It's a true story. I'm not racist, I swear. <laughs> what is what does your mom think? What does your mom think of that? What'd your mom say? Uh think of the uh whole whistle situation yeah. and me getting lost in a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Both. Both. Huh? Both. Both? Yeah. Uh she fully understands. No, she fully understands. She fully understands. Who's she agrees I- with me actually. Whose idea was it to do the whistle program? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Whose idea was it to install the whistle technique? Oh, me. I get e- I, I like overthink a lot, and I get super confused, and I go, all right, I'm just going to start whistling, and then uh, she whistles back. And, like, I'll do like a, I'll go, I'll go uh, like a, <laughs> and then she'll whistle right back at me, and then like a lost dog to the owner, immediately sprint back and. Yeah. Finder. Yeah, I like Hopefully that. Hopefully, don't get it confused with any others. Well, I was gonna say is if you, if you run into any issues of uh, any gals thinking you're like cat calling them, whistling at them, or has that been? Uh, yeah, a uh, little little twelve year old me is cat calling uh, guys and girls were whistling at them. No, it was like a system I made when I was uh, a wee little. <laughs> oh, this is a while ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Okay. No, yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so, I mean, this, your girlfriend lives and breathes ramen noodles. I mean, I have never met anyone talk about ramen as much as you guys have. Like um, she, She's full on college student. She's on the college student diet. Adderall and ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> So she's still in school. Is that I forget. She's still in school. Uh, no, she's not in school. No, she isn't. What's she doing for a job? Did she get a job down there? Uh, not yet. I told her, hey, you know, well, she actually just got back from working a uh, fireworks stand from <laughs> late, late June to 4th of July. So she got paid for that. She's like, I don't know what, 800, 700 dollars for that much. Uh, and then she came back and she was like, you mind if I have like a week vacation? I should, I, I said, you know what? You brought home like 700, $800. Uh, sure. I'll let you go ahead and do that. But then you got to find a job and I'll help you find a job. What are you thinking? What kind of job are you thinking about trying to help her find? I don't know. I have a friend that just started up her own nail tech business. So I was like, Hey, you know, there's an old childhood, well, not childhood, an old teenage friend of mine that I knew during high school. His girlfriend is, opened up like a nail salon business. So, you know, I might talk to her and uh, see if I can get you a job there. Would you be interested? She goes, oh, yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. I go, all right, sure. Yeah, I'll go ahead and talk to her. I never did. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? 
Uh, I kind of just forgot. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Well, this is your reminder to call your buddy and see if you can get her a job. Yeah, but that's the thing. That means the king at Midwest goodbyes. I'll tell you what. I go, hey, man, my old grand, my 1999 Grand Marquis can only fit about like two boxes. Could you, I'll buy you a 30 pack of your choice. And uh, if you, and like $40 worth of gas, if you want to come up to KC, help me put some of her stuff in your truck and then drive down to my place, man. That's a three thirty pack and 40 bucks of gas right there, baby girl. He goes, yeah. Uh, I might be able to do something like that. Yeah, hold on. Let me call you back. Hangs up and then never replies to me ever again. <laughs> okay, so that that connection may no longer be there, is what you're saying. I mean, it's there, but is it really though? That's the real question. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that you might have to find another lead on a job then. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is she uh, applying? Is she putting any applications in or anything like that? <laughs> No, not yet. You see, there's a thing going on at my job, too. Uh, the owner of the company recently came down to my department and said, so we were told that you guys think you're the best department down here. And I'm like, oh, hold on now. <laughs> now that I may believe that, but I never said any of that. Nobody in here in this department has said that to anybody. I don't know how you got that unless you can read my mind, which I doubt you can if you can't Professor X. But... I've never said that about anything. And then he said, well, I know you guys want raises, and I'm not wanting to come down here and pat you guys on the back, but you guys aren't doing a good job. Or something of the sorts like that. So we just basically got told, to, yeah, go screw ourselves, and you're not going to get paid or anything. I go, all right, dude, sick. I'm going to find a new job. And recently I just went up to the HR woman, and she goes, why, why is your performance lacking so much? I go, well, this is the reason why. That's the reason why. They go, huh. Too bad. I go, damn, all right. So we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm applying to uh, a couple other places and see if I can get a job there. But a lot of my coworkers have seen that clip that you guys posted on your Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, so on and so forth. And they really thoroughly enjoyed it and keep on telling me that I should become a comedian. Even my supervisor saw it at one point. Yeah, I think he, I said this on the last podcast. You should. You should get up there. There's some clubs in Kansas City, you know, just start doing open mics. And just start talking about your life, honestly. Yeah, maybe write a few. Yeah, but what, like, what, what do I start out with? You know, I can't be like uh, Larry David, walk up onto a stage, look at everybody and say, ah, never mind, and walk off. I got to start with some, I got like no material. I don't know what to do. I don't well, know what to well, here we go, Charlie. This yeah. is your wheelhouse. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so, talking to a decorated. Yeah, coming from the Charles and stuff. Yeah, you're coming. This yeah. is a decorated uh, stand-up well, comedian you have on the line. So, Charlie, give him some advice. Well, first bit of advice is write five facts about yourself and then write punchlines to that. You know, so write five facts and then just try and write a quick punchline. Less words is better. That'll that should give you something around three minutes, which should be a good thing to kind of get your uh, bearings. You know, a lot of the stand up, the open mics give you three to five minutes. So that's a good start mm -hmm. right there. And the other thing you got to remember is you're going to get up the first time and you might bomb horrendously. I have a feeling you can probably just keep talking yourself into, uh, you know, into some jokes. You know, like if you just get up there and start talking, you might find some jokes. I wouldn't rely on that necessarily, but. Just get up there and uh, you want to be comfortable bombing. So you want to be comfortable getting up there and nobody laughing and just holding your own. Uh, I think you'd be good at that. And now, here's a question. Has anyone ever in their hot five just gone up and only done crowd work? Because I think this oh, sure. Ethan could be the guy. Yeah, I mean, Ethan, you could definitely get up there oh. and do some crowd work. That's for sure. But if the crowd. I, I definitely thought about that. But I don't rely on that. Yeah, you do. You, right. So just start writing. So know that you can probably do some crowd work and, and fill the five. Here's the thing you're going to want to do is record every single set you do uh, because you might find some jokes, some things you say on the fly that you forget after you say it, but it was really funny the way you said it because you get this adrenaline when you kind of are up on stage, no one's laughing and you got to like dig yourself out of the hole. You get this little adrenaline hit and sometimes that helps you find some really good jokes, but you want to record it because you'll forget it shortly thereafter. I say give it a go, man. You're a funny dude. I'm definitely thinking about it. A lot of people have said that I'd definitely be good at it. I said, eh, we'll see. I, I, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I got to really do it. And if I, if I go out there and I bomb, then I bomb. You know, I'm going to get in the city. I'm never going to see these people again. And if I do, that's going to be an awkward run-in. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
I yeah, mean, I mean, I think I'm that that's, thinking about doing it. Yeah, that's the right mentality to have. I think. Yeah, just go do it. You don't need to think. Uh, look up where there's an open mic in what is Kansas City, closest city to you? Is that right? Uh, a populated city near me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go to um, Kansas City and do an open mic. Yeah, just Google Kansas City open mic. I'm doing it right now. I'll give you an option here. A Kansas City open mic. All sorts open mic Friday, 630 to 930. Um, poetic Underground open mic night plus poetry. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you could also do poetry, oh, too, doing Ethan. poetry tonight. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that would act. You should do. You should try slam poetry. I think you might be kind of good at I that. I did that once. How'd it go? Slam like, poetry. I, I'm thinking about just doing like a naked modeling business, you know, letting people see my ass for free. But actually, no, I get paid 35 bucks for that. What? What? Yeah, how did we get to nude modeling, Ethan? We you were done nude modeling. Is that what you said? Oh, no, but I mean, hey, it's 2023 now, you know? Some people like some good old blue-collared, beer-belly, Asian-looking fellas, you know? They want to see that little gut with a little bit of stretch marks. Who don't? Yeah, I mean, hey, I don't know. You know, <laughs> Ethan, nah, I'm just messing around. I'm not going to do that. He, I'm too self-conscious. It sounds like he wants to spread his cheeks on OnlyFans you is know, what it sounds I like. I would be worried about the nude modeling because you might get crumbs everywhere. <laughs> That's uh, you, hey, you know some people are into that. Some yeah, it might be your that. niche. <laughs> crumbs, Roman. crumbs in the crack. Yeah, that'll be my niche. <laughs> that could be crumbs in a- crack. There yeah, you there you go. That's my handle right there. Well, Ethan, we're very excited for you, man. You're uh, how old are you again? 22, 23, 24, 25? Um, uh, Somewhere around there, but like minus one. I'm like 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, oh, okay. somewhere around there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, you got a bright future ahead of you, my man. Uh, yeah. Get out there to that open mic. Uh, it's on the 14th. What what or what or day is today? That's the 11th. You got three days. It's get 11? on over there. All right. And what's the place called? <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Charlie is now your manager. <laughs> all, all sorts open you, mic. You're my manager for the short. I'll pay Patty like five bucks. All yeah. right. Listen, all sorts open mic. Get there. It's uh, 630 to 930. Get there early. Get there at six o'clock to sign up. It's hosted by um, local Iris Applequist. Sign up 630. Never mind. Shows at seven. So get there. 630. Sign up. You'll probably have three to five minutes. Write those facts about yourself or just go riff. But all you got to do is get up on stage. That's the hardest part. Just give it a go. Get up on stage. All right. I can do that. And one more time, the place, because you cut out. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, hard, I'm hard of hearing. Oh, all all Charlie, time. now you know how your manager feels. <laughs> <laughs> it's all sorts open mic. It's 20. All sorts. All sorts open mic. That's what it's called. Um, the PH Coffee. So it must be at this coffee house, PH Coffee, 2200 Lexington Avenue, Kansas City, Missouri. Looks like it's Friday nights, uh, 6.30 to 9.30. So you got a few days. All righty. Okay. All right, um, I got a few days to prep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also... We want another update on how the stand-up goes. So yeah, we next do. time we're recording in a couple months, you got to call in again, and uh, then we can uh, get an update on you how the stand-up this, went, that's good, a good, bad, I- or otherwise. That's a good idea. You should film your set, bring your girlfriend with her, with you, uh, have her film your set, and then we can analyze your set right here on the Bellied Up podcast. How does that sound? <laughs> you said anal. <laughs> Sorry, I'm easily distracted. Yeah, I'll, I'll be more than willing to do that. I'll be more than willing to do that. Sorry, my bad. I get easily distracted. I'll be more than willing to do that. I'll have her uh, film it for me. And she's been very supportive about it. She told me that I could probably do well. But so we'll she thinks you're out. funny, we'll too? What, uh, what? She thinks you're funny then, too? Because my wife does not think I'm funny. Yeah, she uh, she thinks I'm pretty funny. She goes, yeah, some of your jokes land. Some of your jokes don't land with me. I go, all right, I'll, I'll remember that next but time. But taking a uh, dump boy, during the shower <laughs> always lands. That joke always lands. I'm going to warn you about it. All right. A lot of times it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. 2023 is not going to land that much. It's uh, a coin toss. It's you, a coin you never toss. know until we'll you we'll try. I got to work the crowd. All right. Yeah. You go work the crowd and let us know how it goes. All right. All righty, then. Thank you very much for your time, boys. Thanks Thank for you. calling good in. Good to talk uh, to you again, man. We'll Glad you. you're doing good. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.
Oh, good kid. I am so glad he called back in. I am too. He, I love that kid. He's a great fella. Him. Great fella. He's going to get out there. He's going to bomb a few times. I, he might not, though. He's... <laughs> Well, every look, everybody bombs at some point doing stand up. So he's going to have to do that. You want to bomb at some point. Yeah, I don't know. We might have found our Justin Bieber, you know, <laughs> I I think we got to take him to the moon, I hope Charlie. He, I hope he does it. I hope he films it. And I, it'd be great to watch. I would. I yeah. want to see it. I want to air it live so on this in podcast. In three days, should we go down to show the city and show up? <laughs> and just be like, where are and you, And then dude? he doesn't show He's up. He's like, oh, I'm a couple, two, three, four, five hundred miles away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to talk to him again. The internet, the internet, uh, they liked Ethan. I like Ethan, too. Me so as I'm well. I'm glad he was able to come back on. So, guys, what a way to end this episode of Bellied Up. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just everybody cross your fingers for Ethan as he uh, ventures into this new uh, new job, potentially. Yeah. Passion. We should have. What we forgot to do is tell him not to quit yet. His oh, yeah. other job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it kind of sounded like he was putting all of his eggs yeah, in that basket. Hopefully he doesn't quit that other job until... He could bomb a few times and then start to take off. He's a smart guy. I think he'll figure it. Hopefully he listens to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, We'll see. Yeah. Well, Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Bellied Up podcast. Charlie, I might have to try the old uh, taking a number two while the wife's in the shower. I can't say I recommend that. And I think (laughs) Anne would, um, you know, smack you around a little for that. She'd be pissed. So mad. She runs the show in that relationship. Yeah, a little bit. I watched her beat your ass in pickleball yesterday. Okay. I... You were sweating up a storm. It was hot out. She didn't break a sweat, The wind was not my favorite. It was a whole thing, okay? So just... The ball has holes in it. The wind's not an issue. All right. All right. Well, Well, guys, don't forget to tip your bartenders. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye-bye now.